Garlett jumps in. Still a chance, Neil Bullen. Smothered this time. Hannum. First game, 23 years of age. Welcome to the big time. Punch from 3D by the got it down to ground. Hannon, unbelievable pick up in the run through a guy playing his first game, and it's his second goal. Back to full forward. McDonald oh. looks well placed. Got there with Hogan. Skirting the pack was Hannon, and he gets it together and puts it through. And there's more high fives for the D's. Well, our guest tonight uh, burst onto the AFL scene in round one of last year, kicking two goals on debut, winning a Mark of the Year nomination in round 10 and finishing with 22 goals for the season, playing at half forward. Uh, he's won a VFL premiership with the Bulldogs before joining the D's and uh, was a vital cog in Sunday's win over the Bombers. Uh, welcome to the D Milan podcast, Mitch Hannon. Thanks, Eddie. Thanks for having me. Not a problem, Mitch. Um, first things first... Uh, you know, it's great for the club to get back on the winning list uh, on Sunday. And from a personal perspective, uh, you arguably played your best game for the club with a career high 18 disposals, uh, three goals, and some ferocious tackling. Um, you can't ask much more than that, can you? <laughs> That's right. Yeah. No, I was I was quite happy um, with my performance, but like you said, it was good um, as well for the team to get back on the winners list. I think. Um, after a couple of probably disappointing loss, um, it was good to sort of show some of the things we've been working on um, throughout the week, and it came out on the weekend with that with a good victory. It certainly did. Um, the the composition, the competition for spots uh, in your part of the ground is pretty hot. Now we've got Jake Milksham, Bailey Fritch, Jeff Garland, and now Charlie Spargo. Um, they've all shown their wares since uh, the start of the season. Uh, you found yourself back at Casey a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that competition must keep you on your toes. Yeah, it definitely does. Um, it's something that probably wasn't there last year, obviously with the inclusions of, of Spargo and Fritch. So um, it definitely keeps us on our toes to sort of fight for positions. But um, it's probably a healthy thing to have. It keeps everyone an onus on everyone to sort of perform um, on a weekly basis to, to make sure the team's performing. So, But I'm just glad to be back in there at the moment. So, Well, you certainly know where the goals <laughs> are. And, um, you know, we've... We've known about that since you made um, your debut. Uh, what else do the coaches want from you? Uh, is it more involvement in the game, more disposals, or greater pressure and defensive efforts uh, uh, when the ball comes to the ground inside 50, or, or is it sort of a combination of all of those things? Yeah, it's probably a combination of all those things. Um, a half-forward role, it's a, it's a weird one. You're not necessarily always the, um, the main target up forward, but you're left to sort of... Um, pick up the crumbs so there's a lot of things uh, that don't necessarily go down on the stat sheet which are seen as quite vital uh, for a half forward role so like you said those pressure acts um, tackles which obviously get counted um, spoils chase downs um, and just sort of keeping the ball in the forward half to sort of give us a sort of a repeat look at goals so for me personally um, I like to say I, I can sort of compete tall and small so I just, whenever the ball's in the air, I've got to fly for it. And if it's on the ground, um, try and get those sort of crumbing goals. So if I can get a, a sort of a good mix of those sort of things, doesn't necessarily have to be high disposals, um, but a good presence and pressure um, down in the forward line, that's probably going to help me sort of hold my spot. Well, that one of the tackles that you laid on the weekend was just, uh, it was ferocious. Uh, it, it was it was fantastic. Do you to recall the one that I'm talking about? I think it was on McNeese. <laughs> I do. Um, yeah, that was against. I think it was against Bagley. Is that right? Uh, I, I thought it was McNeese. That's what the commentator said, but uh, I'm not sure. I think it was n- number twelve. <laughs> but it was a fantastic tackle, anyway. Yeah, it is. It's it's something we work on. Um, we have been working on over the preseason um, down at the Demons. So with um, uh, some extra tackling um, and and craft around the, te- the technique around it, it, was good to sort of put that on show on the weekend and, and sort of be able to stick a few. So. <laughs> But like I said, as a half forward, that, that's probably um, one of our main roles is to sort of put that pressure on. So to, to see that sort of come out was um, was pleasing for me. Um, t- tell us a little bit about Charlie Spargo because he looked very comfortable out there on Sunday and, and seemed to slot you know really well into that uh, into the forward line. Yeah, he did. He's um, he's a ripping fellow, Charlie. So it's for one, it's good to have him in the team just for his personality because he's a naturally sort of upbeat young fella. But um. He's, he sort of came into the year probably not putting too much expectations on himself, just thinking 
he'd have a development year, but he's um he's probably a little bit further down the track than he thought. He's um he's pretty 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 solidly built and um pretty quick, but mainly I reckon he makes some really good decisions. So as you saw on the weekend, he was at the feet of a couple of drop of balls and and managed to kick himself a couple of goals and and hold his own against some some bigger bodies. So I'm sure that um, even though he will continue to develop, he's um he would have gained a lot of confidence out of that game knowing that he can he can match it with AFL players. Yeah. Um, and Bailey Fritch, uh, he's been the other surprise pack at this season, although for those of us who have seen him at Casey, we're not surprised at all. Um, there's, <laughs> they've said all a lot, people have said all along that uh, he's naturally gifted with beautiful skills and he's certainly shown that in the games that he's played to date. He absolutely has. He's, um, everyone knows it, I reckon, down at Demons. He's, he's absolute pure silk. Bailey Fritch, he's um he's kicking just looks looks like it comes so naturally to him and um, he is he's just highly talented so it's good to see him sort of follow a similar similar pathway to myself through the VFL um, and then all of a sudden to get his opportunity so early in the year so yeah, he's definitely someone that I think a lot of the guys like having down in the forward line um, purely just with his class and his ability to take um, good marks and and over the top of a lot of people that are sort of a lot, a lot sizier than him, but that's something that'll come. It came for me as well, being a little bit undersized uh, in your first year. But um, I'm sure he'll grow and, and put on a bit of weight and he'll be a good player for, for us at Melbourne. How important is the flexibility and versatility of the forward line? Because you, Bailey and Christian Petraka are all very capable in the air, despite not being sort of that big-bodied key position players. Yeah, you're right. It's um, it's definitely very important, um, especially when we've got the likes of of Hogan, uh, Wiedemann and, and Tom McDonald um, flying for marks. It's probably important that we're um, we're wary of what's around us and, and who's flying at the ball because myself and Bailey and, and Christian can all play uh, small forward, so it's probably important we're not all flying for the same mark. And, and that sort of comes around um, creating a bit of chemistry, knowing your knowing your teammates and understanding what's happening in the game to sort of be able to. Um, understand what the right thing for us to do is as hybrid sort of half forwards whether to go go in the air or go on the ground and I think that's something that's it's been slowly improving um, ever since myself Bailey and and the likes of Christian and Spargo um, have come into the, a similar forward line. Um, do you personally do you want to spend uh, time through the middle of the ground or are you happy with the half forward um, and around the goals? Uh, I think my time at Footscray I spent uh, primarily as a half forward so I'd say over the last four years uh, my role has been as a half forward which is probably more of what I've been known to do but personally I'd love to get up into the midfield um, it's, it's probably a little bit hard at the moment with, <laughs> yeah. with, with, with some um, some big names in there of, of Clayton and, and Christian's moving in there now um, Petraco and, and obviously Jones still and the likes of a few others but I'm um I'd love to get through through the midfield. It doesn't have to be a permanent role for me, but I'm happy to do a bit of um, pinch hitting and, and sort of provide a bit of energy and spark in the middle and then also be able to sort of float back down towards half forward and play what probably comes a little bit more natural to me. So we spoke about your marking ability, but the other trick up your sleeve is an incredible capacity uh, to get the boot to ball very quickly around the goals. <laughs> is is that something you've always had or is that that's just a natural ability or...? Oh, it's probably something that, that's just it's come natural for me. I know, um, uh, like coming into into AFL games, one of the things I was most nervous about was um, the, the fast pace and the intensity of it. Um, so I probably just wanted to get ball to boot initially as quick as possible, so I wasn't going to get tackled. <laughs> but but um, like like you've seen, it's probably carried out through my game. If the opportunity is there, which for a small forward um, can sometimes be limited. Um, you're not always necessarily leading up the ball and, and taking a mark going back and having a set shot. So when you get those opportunities uh, around goal to sort of to kick a little quick snap out of a pack, um, I don't know, I guess it just comes natural to me. It's a, it's a split second decision to sort of understand where the goals are, get the ball to boot and then hopefully see it sail through. <laughs> well, you, you had to get your um, your boot to ball very quickly when you were gifted um, a punch from... Um, uh, Joe Danaher the other day um, that sort of came unexpected and you uh, didn't have much room between you and the goal line and getting your foot to the ball and uh, you did that beautifully. 
<laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, you've played 14 games for the Bulldogs in the VFL, including a premiership against Casey in 2016. And prior to that, you won a flag with St. Bernard's in the uh, VFA. Uh, before being drafted by the D's. So can you tell us a little bit about that transition from amateur footy uh, into the VFL and then from the VFL into the AFL? Because you did the, you took that leap pretty quickly. And, uh, I mean, how's it, how they sort those, those they differ from each other, you know, in intensity? Yeah, um, you're right. It, it happened all quite quickly for me, the, the transition through from VAFA, which I guess you could say was sort of local football through the, the VFL and then, and then now into the AFL. But... Um, for me, I was I was playing uh, under 19s um, in the VAFA, and then quickly found myself sort of playing senior football. And I think initially the reasoning behind that was I was I was quite a late developer. I um, I didn't really grow uh, until I was about 18, 19, and then as you know, when you grow, you sort of string out a little bit. So from there, I still had to put a bit of weight on and get used to sort of my size. So um, when I was coming through the junior ranks, uh, I missed out on probably a lot of sort of tack up footy or that normal pathway pathway that your average AFL footballer probably finds himself in. So I was I was left sort of playing um, yeah senior football with, with St Bernard's and, and was given an opportunity to, to play in the half forward line as an under-19 and then eventually found myself in the midfield and, and started to play some good footy. Um, and I think just being in that sort of system was lucky for me that I, was, I found myself with the right contacts to get down to a VFL club in Footscray. And then, likewise, opportunity comes through an AFL list uh, that might be depleted with some injury, and, and you get a go as a 23rd man or whatever it is. But it, ha- it all happened pretty quick for me. I was um, I was playing St Bernard's, and then before I knew it, I was playing Footscray. Played four games in my first year um, and suffered some small injuries along the way. But the pace probably of the game from VAFA level to VFL to AFL has probably grown on me as my body's grown. I think I, I've got used to it as it's come. Um, so initially I found VFL quite quite hard to, to deal with and then uh, as I got used to it and my body got bigger and stronger, um, I, I kept up with the pace of the game and I think that, that also happened in terms of AFL last year for me as well. So um, you were overlooked um, for TAC Cup because you, and you, as you spoke before, you were a late bloomer, you were deemed to be too small um, and then I see that you've listed as being 189 centimetres on the club's website. Um, and I also read somewhere that you grew, was it 14 centimetres or something after yeah. under 18? <laughs> it was something outrageous like that. I think it was, I think I was just 18 and um, sort of struggling to, to crack into the, for me it was the colder cannons. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was within about um, 12 to 18 months, it was about 14 centimetres. Uh <laughs> Which is which is quite a lot to deal with. You get a little bit of growing pains, and and um, your body weight doesn't change much until you begin to fill out. So you're right. It was um, it was something that sort of happened quite rapidly, and probably long term um, has helped me sort of um, adapt to some of the footy that I'm playing now. But yeah, at 189, I'm I'm pretty happy with the height I ended up with. I was getting worried <laughs> there for a while. <laughs> um, what was your thinking at that stage? Uh, like when you didn't make TAC Cup, uh, did you think that an AFL career might have bypassed you or did it just make you more determined to uh, try and get a spot on the list through other avenues? Yeah, I think some of those thoughts are pretty natural. I was a little bit um, quite flat at the idea of not making a list. Um, I was told by Colder Cannons that I wasn't going to be a part of the squad and where I was living at the time, I was also eligible to go down to the the, the Bendigo Pioneers and try out there, and I got the same sort of feedback um, and didn't make the list. So, yeah, I did. I went back to, to local football and, and just really wanted to enjoy it for what it was uh, for a little while. So the desire probably got lost a little bit, um, and, and I went back to a point where I wanted to just have fun. But as soon as, as um, I started growing and playing some good footy, you definitely start to begin to, to think that playing at the highest level um, would become a dream again. So you also you also played some of your junior footy with fellow demon Pat McKenna. Um, can you tell us a bit about him and where he's at? Because he seems to have just had an absolute horror run with injuries um, over the last two years. Yeah, he really has. Pat is a he's a great man. He's probably one of my good friends down at the club, and he has he's had um, he's had a tough time with injury. Um, but I've known him for for years now as a as a local sort of Gisborne boy, he's a couple of years younger than me or maybe a year younger than me. Um, but funnily enough, we played a bit of footy together back in the day because he was 
um, he was quite the gun and forced to sort of play upper level a couple of games every Saturday morning. So, um, and I played with his brother as well uh, at the time. So he was always definitely a gifted footballer and, and cricketer, as you may know. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I've known I've known Pat for a while, and um, yeah, his time at Melbourne has definitely been a bit of a, a treacherous run for him. He's um, I think he's definitely got a lot of talent and skill to sort of still provide, but hasn't been able to put it on show due to his hamstring. But uh, I think he's tracking quite well at the moment, which is which is good. Um, he's had setback after setback, which is um, very disappointing for him because it was a, initially just a hamstring that needed um, some surgery that was eight to twelve weeks or something like that, and then it's just really prolonged out to a sort of twelve fourteen month injury for him. So. I hope for him um, that he's able to get back and, and play some. I'm sure it'll be probably through the VFL at the midpoint of the year, um, and then be able to string some games together to sort of show off the the skill that that I know he has. Yeah, let's uh, fingers crossed for him. Um, we read last week that um, Jake Lever has quit social media as it was negatively impacting him mentally. Um, a are you on Twitter and social media channels and what are your thoughts on, on this issue? Because some so-called fans can, you know, can be absolutely devastating in their criticism and they, and some people, uh, and it's a small percentage of them seem to have no qualms in making it personal. Um, mm. It's an interesting one. Um, I didn't know Jake had done, gone and done that, that's, but that's probably, um, probably for the best I'd, I'd, I'd reckon. Um, I personally, I have a Twitter account, but I actually, I think you can delete Twitter, but I, I deleted the app uh, probably about six to 12 months ago, um, purely because I wasn't really using it enough <laughs> yeah. and got a little interest out of it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm on the other platforms and, and I'm um, I'm following football pages and, and stuff like that. But I think I think you're right. Uh, a footballer's mind frame is, is to sort of uh, trust what you're hearing from the coaches um, and, and trust your teammates and, and try to sort of... Um, keep the information that you think about how you're playing within the four walls of the football club and that a lot of that external noise can um, can definitely sort of cloud someone's thoughts and, and definitely impact the way that they're playing and you're right, those things that you, you see and read and on social media can be quite personal and, and negative, especially after a bad loss. So I think it's probably for the best for the wider football community to probably avoid those uh, reading those kind of comments. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. And I, I just, you know, these days, you know, it's easy for you you to sort of stay away from perhaps websites or fan sites and stuff like that. But with social media where you're, where you're also using it to keep in touch with friends and, and that type of thing to, to you know, in this day and age, people now can direct message you. Um, and it's, you know, it, it's it's given, you know, sort of celebrities and sports people uh, or, you know, fans direct access to celebrities and sports people and, you know, it can be used in, for good, but, you know, it can also negatively impact people. And, yeah, it's probably a smart decision to uh, sort of stay away from reading that stuff. Um, I read that um, that you're an architect or were working for an architect is, is um, or you were. Is, is that something you want to do after footy? Yeah, it, um, it was. So I was doing a course. I, I finished a course in architectural drafting. So, yep. um, sort of technically, I'm, I'm seen as a, as a draftsman. And I yep. was working in a firm um, in the city for ten months, um, up until the point where I got drafted. So, yeah, that was something I was definitely I was loving and enjoying. Um, but to be honest, the, the sort of the, the tedious life of sort of sitting behind a computer was probably <laughs> uh, not for me, which I found myself doing a lot. So football definitely came at the right time for me um i, I do enjoy um architecture and and design um but i think i'm in terms of a post football career i'll be looking for something in a similar field in terms of uh, construction design and and property uh, i'm just sort of looking for that at the moment so i'm, I'm doing a, a bunch of work experience um with some contacts through the club in some property investment um and, and project management type sort of roles so um for me i'll be sort of putting the feelers out and, and seeing what kind of suits me and then hopefully whilst I'm still at Melbourne I'll be able to do a form, some form of study to, um, to sort of lead into something post football Nice, well if any of our listeners want to uh, help Mitch out uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, Mitch I just want to thank you uh, for your time tonight, uh, very generous of you to, to give us your, your time and uh, we really appreciate it and we look forward 
uh, to the rest of the year and uh, hopefully we see a lot more of you and a lot more wins on the board. Yeah, exactly right. All the best for us. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Mitch. I really appreciate it. No worries, Eddie. Thanks very much for having me. Not a problem. Thank you. Cheers.